Okay, and we are doing some equilibrium practice, Le Chatelier's principle, that kind of stuff. Um, if you haven't gone through the notes or watched those videos, please do that um, before you get into this. And let's see. So the key for Le Chatelier's principle that I like to think of is if there is too much, you need to shift away. So like if you're already stuffed at dinner and they put more food in front of you, you shift away. I've got too much food in my belly. I shift away extra food. If you don't have enough, not enough, you're going to shift towards. So if you're at dinner and you're still hungry, you're going to pull your plate closer to you and pull all the side dishes closer to you because you, you're not full enough until you want to get that nice, full feeling of equilibrium, satisfaction. You're not too full. You're not too hungry anymore. Okay, so that's the deal. Also, you know you're at equilibrium when you have a double-sided arrow. Sometimes it looks like this. Sometimes it looks like this. Either way. Given the equation representing a system at equilibrium, which statement describes the system? Okay, so remember, equilibrium, two things you need to remember is concentrations are constant, okay? And the rates are equal, so we say equal. So those might help too. So if you're at equilibrium, concentration, nope, it must be constant, con, con, choice four. What occurs <clears throat> when a reaction is at equilibrium? Concentrations increase of reactants, products, the rates are equal. Hey, that's our answer, choice three. Don't want them slower. Some solid, KNO3, remains at the bottom of a stoppered flask containing a saturated KNO3 aqueous solution. Which statement explains why the contents of the flask are equilibrium? So we have, this is called solution equilibrium. When you're making a solution, of course, you have solute and solvent. The solute would be the KNO3, the uh, potassium nitrate solid, and the um, solvent would be the water, obviously aqueous. So at solution equilibrium, the rate of dissolving is equal to the rate of crystallization, okay? So that is solution equilibrium. Concentration of solid is equal to the concentration of solution. That doesn't make sense because remember, the concentration of the solid would not be equal to the whole thing, it's a part of it. So this is talking about solution equilibrium. A solution that is equilibrium must have not too much, not, not enough, just it has to have exactly enough just like the just right which means saturation that reminds me of solution chemistry all right so we have a stoppered flask which is good because of course you need to have a closed system if this was open gas could escape and it would no longer be at equilibrium so the only way to maintain that gas staying inside is if you stop it which statement describes the system at equilibrium so this is phase equilibrium when you've got the same substance in two different phases. So you've got some water liquid and some water vapor. So at phase equilibrium, the rate, and I'm going to skip, 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 because none of those have to do with equilibrium and rates. The rate of evaporation, remember evaporation means liquid to gas, equals the rate of condensation, which is gas to liquid. That's what we want. The, the, um, the same um, speed of liquid going to gas is the same speed as gas going to liquid at equilibrium. So that's why it is choice four. Which statement describes a reversible reaction at equilibrium? Okay, so let's read. The activation energy of the forward must equal the activation energy of the reverse. Hmm. The rate of the forward must equal the rate of the reverse. Concentration must be equal, no. So remember, con, con, requal. The rate of the forward must equal the rate of the reverse. Okay, given the equation at equilibrium, we know it's equilibrium because we see a double-sided arrow. This is H2OS, which means solid water, which is ice. H2O 
liquid, which is liquid water. So they're going back and forth, back and forth. At which temperature does this equilibrium exist? And now you might remember when we did the phase change diagram um, where we have solid to liquid, I've always drawn it like this with an arrow going this way and an arrow going that way, calling it phase equilibrium. Okay, so uh, this phase equilibrium, what is that? Remember, we go over here. This is the freezing point. This is the melting point. So where is the temperature? Oh, oh, wow, this is a, this is a naughty question because you see zero, you see 32, and you see 273. So we have to pay attention to units here. The freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but yucky, that's the F word. And zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin right? So uh, that's why you choose choice two. All right, let's continue. Don't forget, too much shift away, not enough shift towards con con recoil. And uh, hold on a second. Aren't they so cute? Look at it. All right. There we go. All right. The temperature at which a solid and liquid phases of matter exist equilibrium is called, okay, solid and liquid, we just talked about that. That's the melting point. <clears throat> it's hard to read. It's at equilibrium. What changes occur when you add O2? So find O2, here it is. That's my stress. Okay. So if I've got too much here, I have to shift away. And when you shift away, increase, increase, decrease. The equilibrium shifts to the left, and the concentration of PCl3 decreases. Be careful, because that was POCl3, and I almost got tripped up. Okay, another equilibrium. Notice here you've got those two arrows like this, and this one has a double-sided. It means the same. Okay, so what happens when H2 is increased? So here's our stress. You've got too much shift away. Up, up. Whoever the reaction arrow talk, uh, points to goes up. This goes down. Now let's look for our answer. The rate of the forward, forward is always left to right, increases. That's right. Uh, and the concentration of N2 decreases. Hey, that's our answer. Um, I should have known, but whatever. All right. Number 11, given the reaction at equilibrium, which change will result in a decrease of NO formed? Okay, so concentrations are easy, so I'm going to look at two and three. So if we decrease, oh, I'll come back for one and four. So if we decrease N2, that means we're going to shift towards, and that would go up, up, down. Oh, I think that's our answer. No? Oh, yes. So it is, yes, it's choice two because I was not looking here. Um, yeah, now remember with pressure, it has to do with unequal number of moles. And so this is one, two moles, and that is two moles up. So that means pressure is not going to um, be a factor. Oh, temperature? Yeah, well, this is... Ah, I get so flustered sometimes in this video. I apologize. But it is choice two. Let's go back. Which change favors the reverse reaction means which one is going to go to the left? Decreasing HI. If we decrease HI, we go to replace it. So we shift towards. So that's not our answer. If we decrease temperature, here's heat. Decrease temperature, we shift towards. Oh, that could be it. Increased pressure, I'm just going to skip to that. So we have the gas phase, but we have the same number of moles, so that's not it. And let's just double check. I'm pretty sure it's choice two, but you never know. Let's, I can make mistakes. Increase I2. If you increase I2, we're going to shift that way to get rid of it. Yeah, so I was right originally, choice two. All right. Uh, an increase in temperature. So here's our temperature, heat. If you increase temperature, what happens? Shift away, which means HI, hydrogen iodide, should increase. These guys should go down. Equilibrium will shift to the left. No. Equilibrium will shift to the left. No. 
Equilibrium will shift to the right and HI's concentration will increase. That's our answer. Given the reaction at equilibrium, which shift will shift it to the right? Increase temperature. Here's our temperature. If we increase this, it's going to shift to the left. No. Pressure. Three moles here, two moles here. Okay, that. So pressure will do it. So if you increase pressure, we're going to go from more moles to fewer. So this is going to go to the right. Ooh, that could be it. Decreasing SO2 is going to shift to the left. Decreasing O2 is on the same side. So yeah, that's got to be. If the pressure on the system is increased, what will happen? Okay, so increased pressure, we're going to go from more moles to fewer. And how do you figure out which side has more moles? You count the coefficients. One, excuse me, four and one. This side is five. This side is two and two is four. So five to four, we're going to shift this way. And if you shift that way, that goes up, that goes up. These go down. So Cl2 will increase. How's it going? All right, last two. Got a reaction. Which change will not, <coughs> excuse me, will not affect the equilibrium of all those? Adding more A. Well, you know if you add more, we're going to shift equilibrium to the right, so that's not going to do it. Adding a catalyst. Oh, I think that's our answer. Let's just verify. Increasing temperature, it's going to be the heat. We're going to shift to the left. No. Increasing pressure, that's five moles to one moles. Yeah, that's going to do it. So remember, a catalyst is going to speed up the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy and providing an alternate reaction pathway. But it doesn't change the equilibrium. It just speeds up both rates. Well, that's cool. Anyways, uh, so that's why that's our answer. Finally, what will opt? Look at me. I'm a one-trick pony. The addition of a catalyst will increase the rate of the forward and the reverse equally. It just gets you there faster. If you have any questions, please reach out. Please let me know. Otherwise, hope this helps. Take care.